Okay, this next example, um, create, saves, and prints collection of guitar uh, chord fretboard diagrams. Um, and it starts by loading in some embedded images. These are just embedded, they're not compressed, so we don't need to do any uh, converting back from, um, from text to binary. Um, if we load this into Rebel, you'll see it's just a, a binary representation of an image. Um, it's already loaded in this uh, in this definition so this fretboard diagram already does the loading for us this definition of uh, the fretboard diagram so we can put that into a GUI yeah. uh, image and fretboard in there and you can see this is what the image looks like small image but we're going to do some nice uh, resizing uh, Techniques to resize in this program. Um, they'll make that a little bit bigger in the program. Now, there are a couple other little, little images, uh, something that's used to, to create a bar across the fretboard and some dots that are put on the fretboard. Um, and uh, this uh, program makes use of uh, a little bit of code that was copied from this, um, this tutorial on this website. The feel um, property in a uh, in a GUI is extraordinarily useful and important if you're going to do any any sort of game programming or uh, graphics in Rebel. You need to really learn how how to use this feel code. Um, we're going to use a pre-composed little uh, function here. Um, the feel um, property in in the GUI uh, lets you really get down and deal with how down and dirty and deal with how uh, faces are moved around and. Uh, how clicks are handled and, and that sort of thing in the GUI, but uh, at this point it's covered quite a bit more later in this tutorial and in depth later in this tutorial. Um, so for now we're just going to copy this code and understand that with this defined, we're going to pop it into the Rebel, Rebel interpreter and know that with this defined, what that little move style does um, is it lets us move images, sort of slide them around in a GUI. And what we need to do is Add the words once that's, once that's defined. Add the words feel move style um, to any uh, uh, to any uh, GUI item. For example, we go back up and do that layout. Now and add feel move style to it. You'll see that same little um, that same little fretboard, which normally is just positioned in the GUI. Now we can slide that around because we add that feel and then the move style um, code. And that's what's going to let us slide things around this uh, this little GUI sign. So what we've got going on here in the in the code is a couple couple little graphics have been defined. Uh, we've got the move style defined. Now we're going to um, design a GUI block. That goes from here right down. All the way down to here. I mean, you can watch the indentation to see where that where that occurs. Um, there's a new um, word here. Backdrop will set the uh, the color of the GUI to the specified color. Um, we're going to um, define this word current fretboard to be an image, which we're going to use in, in GUI. Uh, label that image as current fretboard. Uh, it's the fretboard uh, image that we created above with this size. Now the ori original image is actually only 85 by 100 pixels, but you can resize anything, any image in Rebel, just by giving it a new, um, uh, a, a new size, a new uh, horizontal and vertical size. Uh, we can do some really interesting things with that resizing feature, and Rebel does this all automatically for us. Um, we'll explore that more later also. Um, and then we're going to use the bar image above. Put bar image in on the GUI. Label it as current bar, and again resize it. And here we're going to add the feel move style. So this bar image that we add is going to be movable um, on the uh, on the GUI. And then we have a couple instructions here. There's just some text. We use the text word to add some text to the GUI, and it's got the underline property. Um, the instructions are drag the dots and other widgets onto the fretboard. Now we use the crossword so that uh, 
items are placed next to each other on the on the GUI. Um, and that's just going to be some text that says resize the fretboard. So there's a button in the GUI that lets us actually resize all these images that we've that we've put on the fretboard. Um, the tab word is useful also in laying out GUIs. It just um, aligns GUI elements to a predefined column spacer. Um, and what we're going to do here is put a rotary button, which changes, uh, gives us several options. And um, when that button is clicked on, um, it's going to run this code. And in that code, uh, we're going to set the current fretboard item size to be the value that is selected on the rotary button. So we can switch between a size of 255 by 300, 170 by 200, or the original 85 by 100 size. Um, so we can make different size uh, fretboard diagrams to save and use later on. And also, once we've done that, um, and once it is shown, so that the new uh, resized fretboard diagram is now shown on the GUI, show the current fretboard. Um, we're going to run this. Um, and what this little thing does is it also resizes the bar um, item because if we use a a bar on that fretboard diagram, it needs to be properly sized to the fretboard diagram. Um, so a little switch statement using the value that was selected on the rotary button. Um, if the value on the button is 255 by 300, then the current bar size needs to be changed to 240 by 15, and then that current uh, bar needs to be updated in the GUI using the show word. That was show word was in previous examples. Uh, if it's 170 by 200, the relative size for the current bar is 160 by 10, and so on for each of these sizes. So whenever we switch the size of the current fretboard, the size of that little bar diagram, all the bar image is also going to be changed. As we return to move on to the next line, and we have a button. And what this button does, it says save diagram, and that's exactly what it does in the action block here. Uh, we get a file name. Um, it's uh, gotten by a request file. Uh, the default file name is 1.png, and we could change it to 2.png or any other file name we want to give it. And again, the way this works is we're assigning a word to something. First thing that Rebel sees is a two-file function which needs um, some data, and that data is going to be gotten, going to be returned by this request file function. And these are some properties, uh, some refinements on the request file function that uh, make it more appropriate for our use here. Once we get a file name, we're going to save in PNG file, uh, format to the file name that was chosen by the user, an image and that image is going to be gotten from the current fretboard image above, whatever we've um, done with that image in the program here. Uh, we have no tab so that it's aligned, um, aligned to a predefined position on the GUI. Uh, 